God gives us the capacity for choice. We can choose to alleviate the suffering. We can choose to work together for peace. We can make these changes, and we must, by President Jimmy Carter. This quote can be applied to nearly every conflict known to man. However, we believe this quote fits best with the Camp David Accords. We believe this quote fits best with the Camp David Accords because of all the painstaking effort that came into making the Camp David Accords accomplished. We understand that three men had to work hard to rise against discrimination, racial tensions, historical differences, all in the hopes of ending the countless wars between Israel and Palestine. Before we go further into the compromise between these countries, we must first look back at the history of their conflict. In 1917, thousands of Jews came into Israel as a result of the Zionism movement, which saw the return of the Jewish people to their homeland to escape persecution. In November of that same year, Britain declared its intent to create a Jewish homeland in Palestine. However, this did not bode well with the local Palestinians. In 1923-1922, the League of Nations divided the territories of the former Ottoman Empire into mandates. They were Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, and the new entity, Palestine. In Western Palestine, Palestinian Arabs and Zionist Jews wrestled for control. In 1933-1936, there was a massive Jewish immigration to Palestine after the Nazi party gained power in Germany. This was because the horrible thing that the Nazi party was doing against the Jewish people, such as the Nuremberg Laws and the Night of the Broken Glass. Then, on November 19th of 1947, the United Nations divided Palestine into separate Jewish and Palestinian states. In 1948, the first side of conflict occurs when Jewish forces attack the Palestinian village of Deir Yassin. On May 14th of that same year, Israel declares its independence and is met with conflict as the next day, five Arabian nations invaded the territory. This event is known as the Arabian-Israeli War of 1948. And during this war, the Zionists defended their territory very well and took some of the Palestinian land. Because of this, over 700,000 Palestinians became refugees from 1949 through 1956, conflict raged on between the Arabians and Israeli people. In 1956, the Suez Crisis occurs as a result of Egypt blocking Israeli ships from passing through the Suez Canal. At the same time, a Palestinian Fedayeen launched cross infiltrations and attacks on Israeli civilian centers, later sparking retaliation of Israel, and thus the Second Arab-Israeli War. June 2nd of 1964, the Palestinian Liberation Organization was established in Jerusalem and at first worked to return the 700,000 refugees to their home, but later played a key role in the relationship with Israel. In June 1967, Israel launched a preemptive strike against Egypt, Syria, and Jordan, leading to the Six Day War, which ended with the Israeli army occupying Egypt's Sinai Peninsula, Syria's Golan Heights, and Jordan's Western Bank. As a result of the war, 250,000 Palestinians were displaced. Then in September of the same year, an Arab summit conference declared that Israel would not be recognized as a country. The next year, in 1974, Israel and Egypt signed the Disengagement Accord over the Suez. In 1978, Israel invaded southern Lebanon in response to the Palestinian Liberation Organization attack. Finally, after warring with each other for many years and after the countless lives lost, the two countries, Palestine and Israel, decided to work towards a peace agreement, thanks in large part to President Jimmy Carter. President Jimmy Carter puts the Middle East top of his foreign agenda and invites Egypt and Israel to talks at Camp David. A year later, President Sadat of Egypt and Prime Minister Begin of Israel sign a treaty in which Israel agrees to withdraw from the Sinai. It's the first peace agreement between the Israelis and an Arab state. This treaty was originally called the Framework for Peace in the Middle East and entailed just that, which called for Israel to withdraw from the Sinai Peninsula within three years, and also called for an end to Israeli settlements in the West Bank. Things were finally starting to get better. This decision was met with both elation and rejection. 
After all, one can expect turmoil after the first peace treaty between Israel and an Arab country. Many in Palestine were furious at the president's signing of the accords. The anger was so strong that in October of 1981, President Anwar al-Sadat was assassinated by Muslim extremists in Cairo, Egypt during a military parade. This sad loss represented the universal fact that everything comes with a price. We thank Sadat for his bravery as it not only saved countless lives, it not only brought President Carter reputation, but it set the ground for future peace treaties. Peace accords ended immediate fighting between the two countries. However, it did not totally secure peace. That would later be secured by the Oslo Accords in 1993, and then finally 10 years later with the Geneva Accords in 2003. At last, after a long journey through conflict, high tensions, and sacrifices, we have finally reached a compromise. It is our hope that the events that transpired between these two countries will always stand as an example for international 